Hi guys, welcome to The Attic. My name is Mark Jago. I'm a philosophy professor in the UK. Today I want to talk to you about the hereditary condition in intuitionistic logic and how we might go about proving it. Okay, so there's a lot going on there. The hereditary condition in intuitionistic logic. What is all that? So if you're not familiar with intuitionistic logic, don't start here. Go and have a look at these videos where I talk about what intuitionistic logic is and how the semantics for it work. What we're going to be doing today is proving something about how intuitionistic logic works, about how the semantics work. In other words, we're doing meta logic. OK, so if you're not familiar with that idea, the idea of proving things about logic, go and have a look at these videos where I take you through the basics of meta logic. So today we're going to be looking at the hereditary condition in the semantics for intuitionistic logic. I'm going to explain what that is and then I'm going to walk you through the proof. If that sounds good to you guys, do me a favour before we get going. Give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't already, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notifications. OK, so let's start off with what is the hereditary condition? So in intuitionistic logic, we're working with states or stages. Maybe there's one down here and maybe there's one up here, and maybe there's another one up here. Maybe there's a whole bunch of them connected going upwards in the model. What the hereditary condition says is if some sentence A is verified down here, then it's also going to be verified up there. Putting it a bit more precisely, if A is verified at this state down here, then A is also going to be verified at any state you can get to from that one. So thinking upwards, going on a path upwards from that state, you're also going to find A up there. Now, it's part of the definition of these models in intuitionistic logic, intuitionistic semantics, that this principle holds for the primitive sentences. The P's, the Q's, the things without the connectives in, no and, no or, and so on. In other words, if you've got a P or a Q or an R or whatever down here, then you're going to have that P further up as well at any accessible state. So basically what we're doing when we're proving the hereditary condition is we're taking it for granted that it holds for the, the P's and the Q's, and then we're extending that result to all the other sentences, the conjunctions, the disjunctions, the if-thens, and the negations. So let's see how we do that. So we are going to use a proof by induction, a proof by induction on the complexity of sentences. OK, if you're not sure what that is, go and have a look at this video where I explain the magic of proof by induction and how we use it in logic. Once you've got your head around that idea, come back here and we'll see how we use proof by induction to prove the hereditary condition. OK, so the first step of any proof by induction is to establish the base case. In logic, that typically means showing the result holds for the primitive sentences, the P's and the Q's. Well, we've already got that by definition, because in a model, by definition, if you've got a P at the bottom, then you're going to have a P higher up on that same branch. OK, so the base case is done. We now have to do the induction step. So to do the induction step, we are going to make our induction hypothesis. So we're trying to prove the hereditary condition for an arbitrary sentence. Let's call that sentence A. Our induction hypothesis is going to be that for any other sentence B that's less complex than A. OK, if you're not quite sure what I mean by less complex, it's basically saying it's got less connectives in it. So for any sentence B less complex than A, if you've got B down here, then you're going to have B up there. In other words, the result, the hereditary condition, holds for all the sentences less complex than A. And we're going to show that it also holds for this sentence A. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we've got A down the bottom here. We're going to use this induction hypothesis to try and get ourselves an A up the top there as well. Now, to do that, we have to use some information about this sentence A, but we haven't got an awful lot. One thing we do know is that it's not a primitive sentence. It's not a P or a Q. So it's got to be a conjunction, a disjunction, a negation or an implication. And if then we're going to go through each of those four cases on its own. OK, first case, let's suppose that A is a conjunction. So it's got the form B and C. OK, here's how the reasoning goes. If B 
and C is verified down the bottom here, then we know that B is verified and also C is verified. But both of these sentences are less complex than A, OK? This is A. So this one has got less connectives in it than this one. So we've got a sentence less complex than A. Our induction hypothesis says if it's down the bottom, then we can put it up the top. OK, so by that reasoning, we can put B here and reasoning similarly, we can put C there. So up the top here, we've got a B, we've got a C, so we can add B and C. That was the sentence that we were interested in. So that's our first case. If A is a conjunction, then A is going to be up the top here too. Second case to think about, what if A is a disjunction? So then it would have the form B or C. The reasoning here is going to be pretty similar. So if we've got B or C down the bottom here, what do we know? Well, we might have B there or we might have C there or we might have both. We don't know which. So let's take each in turn. First case, if we've got B here, B is less complex than A. So we can use our induction hypothesis. That tells us that B goes up the top here. And where we've got B, we've got B or C. OK, if B is verified, then B or C is verified. So what we've shown there is that if B or C is here because B is here, then we've got B or C at the top. Same thing goes in the other case. If we've got C at the bottom, then we get C at the top. So we get B or C at the top there as well. What about the case where we have both? Well, we don't really have to consider that case. We've already kind of considered it by thinking about the B case and the C case. But if you think about it, the same thing would go. If you've got B and C, then you would have B and C at the top. So you would have B or C. So yeah, basically either way, you're going to get B or C at the top. But when we do this proof by induction, when we do the disjunction case, you don't have to think about the both case. You just do the either or the B case and the C case and you're done. OK, so we've done the case for conjunction and disjunction. Now we're going to think about negation and implication. These cases are a little bit different and kind of a little bit weirdly, we don't need to use our induction hypothesis to get these ones working. Both these cases are a little bit similar. So once we've got the hang of one, we can do the other one. Let's just think about the case where A is a negation. So it's got the form not B. In intuitionistic semantics, not B basically means you never get B as you go higher up that branch. And we're going to try and show that we've got not B here. To show that, we would have to show that you never get B as you go higher up from this branch. Well, just suppose that you did. OK, let's do this supposition in red. Suppose that you got B higher up here somewhere. Well, then you would be able to get from here to here by transitivity. OK, but we've already said that we never get B when we go up from here. So what we've shown is that you can't have B anywhere that you can get to from here. OK, we can't have that. So because we never get B anywhere higher up from here, that basically means that not B holds there. So we've shown that if not B is here, then not B is verified there. And kind of weirdly, we did that without using our induction hypothesis. Final case to consider, what if A is an implication? So then it's got the form B arrow C, if B then C. This case is going to be pretty much like the negation case. So in intuitionistic semantics, if B then C means at every accessible state, if you've got a B there, then you've got a C. In other words, you can never have a B without the C. So just suppose for reductio that you don't have B arrow C here. Well, that would mean that in some accessible state, you would have a B, but not a C. But if we did that, then we would be able to get from here to here. But we can't have the B without the C because we've got if B then C here. OK, so what that means is we can't have this case here. So we've shown that for every state accessible from this one, if you've got a B, then you've got a C. In other words, B arrow C is verified here. OK, so assuming that B arrow C is verified there, it's also verified up here. OK, thems are all the cases. So we've shown that whatever kind of sentence A might be, if it's verified down there, then it's also verified up the top here. We've proved the hereditary condition for intuitionistic logic. OK, so that's the proof. And here's a thing that I think is really nice about this way of reasoning. 
When you think about the whole proof, it looks kind of complex. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Once you get the basic idea of proof by induction and you break it down into steps, the base step, the inductive hypothesis, the induction step, where you break it down into all the different cases, each little step on its own is pretty easy. And that's kind of the way logic goes. Once you know how to break a difficult thing down into its little components, each little step is usually quite easy on its own. And it's just a case of putting them all together in the right way to get the big complex looking result. Okay, so thank you so much for listening this far. I hope this has been useful to you. I hope it's been helpful. If you want to find more stuff like this, I'm going to be bringing out loads more tutorial videos, logic videos on this channel. So if you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to get notifications. If you've got any questions on this stuff, leave me a comment down below. I try to answer all of them. Thanks again for watching the video. I really appreciate it and I hope to see you back here soon.